by praying and seeking the Lord, he said, I needed to come up a little higher. I needed to get a perspective that meant when you go through things, thanks of God, this is what he gave me, maybe not you all, there's something the Lord is trying to get over. I needed more deliverance. I needed a closer walk with Jesus. And I needed to show that by treating her right no matter what. When it was all said and done, she had to have angioplast surgery and she had to be out. How about this was at the busiest time of the year and she was about to fire me. I was the only one who knew how to do inventory control. This was before Windows, I had to run four PCs just to get the orders through. I was going through meetings, dealing with warehousing, warehouse trafficking and all of that to get things to and fro for year end for revenue. How about when it was all said and done, I got all these accolades and my vice president came to me, she tore up the review, she rewrote it, she gave me a 15% raise plus sent me out to dinner and she told me, I see what's going on. You do nothing but your job. Well, eventually the lady was fired and released from the company. So here's what I'm going to leave you with. Trust God. Don't always think just because they're wrong you have a platform. When people talk about you and lie on you and mistreat you, God is trying to bring you up a little bit higher. He is trying to get you to trust him more, to fast and pray, and for you to walk in full assurance that he careth for you. But he wants to do a work in us sometimes first, and the deliverance will follow. I pray that this bless you because I still follow this formula, because there's still things coming on the job. But the Lord gave me that job, and in him giving me that job, I'm going to retire from it in four years from this Saturday if the Lord says the same. I claim that. But that's my confidence that David had in the Lord. Yes, troubles will come. But I encourage you to ask the Lord to search you. That's what he did for me, and I do it now. When there's an altercation or an offense, I'm like, Lord, search Rita. Sincerely, not so that I can, but so that I can humbly serve him and raise up holy hands without wrath and doubting. So pray much for me as I pray for you. Thank God for that presentation, and the Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I fear? Thank you, Sister Rita. Thank you. We thank God for all of you. Had a little technical difficulty, but we're, we're on the air, so we greet the Facebook listeners and the YouTube listeners. God bless all of you for, uh, for being here. And we thank God for what God is doing. Um, so we're going to go to Psalm 1 tonight. And God bless First Lady Valerie Edwards. God bless you. Let's pray. Good to see her. Amen. Um, we're going to go to Psalm 1. And um, I've entitled this, The Faithful Person Versus the Faithless Person person, the faithful person versus the faithless person, faithful as in being with God, having faith in God, living for God, versus the faithless person, a person who lives their life far from God. It is very important. You can, you can be saved and still not be all what God desires you, can, you to be. You can be saved and still not what God desires for you to be. There, there's more, there's higher heights, deeper depths. Paul said that, that I may know him. And Paul was, we thought Paul knew him, but he said even that I may know him in the power of his resurrection. He wants to know him in a, in a different way. He wants to know God in a different way. And sometimes things come to enlighten us 
of what God is and, and how God is. And so he, he sends sometimes tests or he allows things to happen. And then when he delivers, there's an aha moment in God. And I knew him as this, but now I know him in this. And, and then that builds your faith and then it just gives you um, this, this awesomeness about God. When we were talking about Psalm 81 and the Asaph, the writer, said, I open my mouth wide. Not just open, but I want, I want it all. I, I want it all, and, and I want, it doesn't mean the blessings, but I want to see God's face. I want to know him. I want to know him. And I want to live closer to him. Are you hearing me? Um, so um, let's look at Psalm 1 because it's going gonna, it's gonna to do a contrast. This is what I am in God. And this is what I am without God. Uh, Charles Spurgeon. Charles Spurgeon, we... Theologians say he's the prince of preachers. He lived back in, the, I think, the 1700s, 1800s, and uh, um, very thorough uh, preacher, Christian preacher. But he says this, walk with God, and you cannot mistake the road. You have infallible wisdom to direct you, permanent love to comfort you, and eternal power to defend you. Walk with God and you will have everything you need to get through this life. The believer must realize that when it comes to living this life, God is all you need. Everybody should say amen on that. But in life, we're, we're, giving, we're given two roads. There was always two roads in life. The, the highway, the truth way, and the wrong way or the low way. And then we are given the ability or opportunity to choose. We get to choose whom we will serve and follow. Now, Psalm 1 is anonymous. They don't know who the writer is. Um, there is not a signature on this one. Um, but this anonymous writer contrasts between the life of the godly and the life of the ungodly. The writer shows us what the blessed life looks like. The blessed life brings prosperity and fruit. The blessed person is rooted and grounded in the things of God and would not be moved from the foundation of Jesus Christ. But the enemy and the sinful man have been trying to overthrow the sovereign rule of God. This revolt has been going on since the fall of man and Adam and Eve. Now, um, so you, you need to understand the tricks of the devil and his purpose. Not only is he bothering you, but he's also trying to dethrone God. And one of the things he has always used is idolatry. If you read the Old Testament, Idol, idolatry, was something that Israel struggled with because of the city they were in, because of the, the, the carnal king, the unholy king who brought idolatry in or uh, some married the wrong person. Um, um, I think, was it Ahab married Jezebel? Ahab, yeah, 
Yeah, and she brought the idol worship, but there was always a, an attack against the true God, even in the tabernacle, even in the worship. They had the audacity to put idols in front of God. And then things now creep in the church that, that is all rooted in idolatry to try to, to dethrone the one sovereign God. So, one of the tricks of the enemy is to entice saints into taking counsel with sinners. In other words, uh, walking and listening and, and, and being enticed by people that don't live for God. You saved and you're taking spiritual counsel from someone who's not saved. You're saved and you're getting, getting your advice from the world. And anytime you accept that and then you bring it into the church, then the church suffers. Are you hearing me? So in other words, you only get God things from God's people. Okay? Let's be clear. You only get God things from God people. The word has all of God's instructions, his promises, and all of his blessings. Therefore, we must be enhanced by God's word and his presence. So the rhetorical question is, what path of life are you traveling? And then who's helping you get there? That's rhetorical. What path of life are you traveling and who's helping you get there? Now, since this is a short um, psalm, I want to read through it, and then we're going to go back and discuss some things. But... Um, it's in your notes if you go to page four. Um, we're going to read through this, and then um, we're going to discuss it. If you have any questions, um, you can ask your questions. And let's read through this. Are you ready for the word? Uh, let's read that, Sister Drew. Amen. Psalms 1, New King James Version. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor seeks, sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, yes. whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore, the godly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. God bless the reading of his word. Uh, so if we, if we start breaking this down a little bit, uh, verse 1, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. So what is he saying here? First of all, um, he, he starts off with the word blessed, or blessing, or blessed, which, which is translated to a Hebrew form of happiness, which, which translate not into what we think happiness is, but what God is. It is something that is not deserved, but a gift 
of God. So, so when the Bible speaks of blessed in the Bible, it is not, it is not some um, adoration or some, um, uh, something given without God, but it's something given by God. Are you hearing me? You are not blessed. Um, you're not blessed outside of God. So when the Bible says blessed, it is only talking about something that is attached to God. We either bless God or he blesses us. Are you hearing me? We either bless God or he blesses us. If, I'm, if I use the word, I want to bless you with this, what I'm saying is, um, what I should be saying is, the Lord has laid this upon my heart to give you this. Okay? If I'm using the word bless, it should be something that this is what the Lord is uh, telling me to do or urging me to do. So I'm giving you this because I'm blessing you. God told me to do that. But no one is blessed outside of that. So uh, it is not a gift or it is a gift of God. It is not deserved, not dependent upon our circumstances, but upon the vitality of our relationship. I'm ringing. Upon the, upon the vitality of our relationship with God. So um, it has to do with the strength of our relationship. The strength of my relationship with God um, uh, will, will equate to the blessings of God. Are you hearing me? Okay, okay. Um, then these three words, walk, stand, sit. Walk, stand, sit. So it says, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Come on, say walk, stand, sit. Okay, so, so these words picture the way of the ungodly as devolving decadence into deeper strongholds of sin. Now listen at this clearly. Devolving, that word means sinking. Decadence is a moral and cultural decline. Are you hearing me? A moral and cultural decline. So, so the power of evil always proceeds downward. The power of evil always proceeds downward. It's kind of like this. The devil is not going to say, you know what, I've been messing with you too long. Look at Charlotte. I've been messing with you too long. Just go ahead and get saved. I'm going to stop messing with you. Mm -mm. It's kind of like, you know, I, I love watching animal movies. And, you know, that, that, little, that little antelope, not that, well, no, not the antelope in, in, in Africa. Gazelle. Yeah. Those, those gazelles or those those little little baby ones who just got born and 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 then when that lion comes and the little baby start running but he can't outrun the lion and I'm sitting here going where's the mercy the lion ain't saying well he just he's just born I'm just gonna get one of the big ones the old one he hungry you, you get that the devil is he, he's a, like a roaring lion seeking who made him. He, he, he hungry, he want to entice, he want to, he don't care. So, so the power, it proceeds downward in the lives of vulnerable people. Everybody understand that? You don't win hanging with the devil. You don't win being carnal. A carnal saint 
falls down. When you are on the edge, you falling down. When you're on the line, you're going to get pushed over the line on the wrong way. That's why you stay close to God. Are you hearing me? So let's look at what these words, when it says, when it, when it says, who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Godly. Walk refers to the series of steps that the ungodly person takes in life. The decisions he or she makes and the direction that one pursues. So when it says, walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, it's literally saying, uh, the steps I'm taking, I'm taking them with the sinners, and I'm going down with them. So, so in other words, it's a, it's, it's a carousal, it's a, it's a uh, hanging out with the ungodly. Because it refers to my steps. So in other words, the steps you are taking... You're taking them with the wrong people. And it's going to lead you away from God. The steps you are taking is going to lead you down a path. I've been trying to release something. I'm just really getting the confirmation. And I told my wife to pray for me because um, there's some things that are happening that didn't happen before. And things are creeping in to the church. People are coming to church less and they're taking steps with the world. Then they come back and bring the world back into the church and then you have a carnal church. And then what happens is what the Bible says, they have a form of godliness and they deny the power. So you'll have church with no power. When the church in Revelations, when he said, I'll remove the candlestick. God never said, I'll close the church, but he said, I'll remove the candlestick. In other words, you'll still be here having church, but there'll be no power. I said, Lord, I, I told my wife, I got to be very biblical because if I just, if I sound dogmatic, they're going to think it's my opinion he's falling off. If I bring the word, you can't refute the word. I learned a long time ago in preaching, less of me and more of the Bible is better. That's why, you know, if, 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 if I give the word, there ain't no debate. There's things people are creeping in, and then the relaxation and no conviction. So the steps they're taking are getting more and more away from God. We got to deal with, because our children are, are being, they're just being, uh, subjected to a crooked world. And, and children, think back, children are curious. And the curiosity, the innocent, innocent curiosity can get a stronghold. The new Toy Story coming out, I'm told, on the news, I'm told that there's a gay, there's a, there's a lesbian actor. Uh, this is a cartoon, Toy Story. It's a, it's a spinoff. I think it's called Buzz Lightyear. The next one is a Buzz Lightyear. I, I was told on, on a radio program that there'll be a, uh, a lesbian uh, couple, and they'll kiss. Now, these are animated, and then they'll get married. Now these are, this is supposed to be your kids watching. Now you know that's a demonic agenda. 
And this has been going on and been going on and been going on. We, the church, have to stand up. And our parents are taking our children to everything else they can't miss. They in all clubs, but they don't bring them to church. They'll, they'll, they'll take them on a, on a weekday, they'll take them to their clubs, to their, to their organization, to their dance, to their sports, but you can't bring them to church. And then, so who are they going to listen to? The influence of the church. You know, I, I, I told my wife, I mean, think about it. You know, if you ever grew up in the church, which I have all my life, we have maybe 70% less church than what I grew up in. Y'all want the list? Tuesday, prayer and Bible band. From 6 to 8, prayer and Bible band. 8 o'clock, the pastor got up and taught from 8 to 9.30. Wednesday, choir rehearsal. Monday night, I was at a district meeting or a jurisdictional meeting. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Thursday, fellowship meeting. Friday, back to uh, Friday night service. And they prayed, 8, 8.30, pastor got up, or they had test, no, they, then they testified. So the pastor got up at 9 o'clock. If I kept y'all here at 9 o'clock, y'all wouldn't, wouldn't be here. We get out at 8, and they were, we were starting at 8. And then Sunday service, where you stayed in service for about three hours. Am I telling the truth? And then you came back Sunday night. And you know what? We didn't complain, because that's all we knew. We, we didn't complain. Now this modern day church, maybe I ought to go back. <laughs> but modern day church and then what happens is uh, all of that and then Tuesday night and Sunday morning and if y'all come to Sunday school it does. that's it then if there's a complain there I'm like so and, you, and, and they take their children everywhere Oh, the children got can't go there. Children can't go there. Children got to go there. Where are they getting their spiritual guidance? Where is the reinforcement? So the steps, it is, it is, it is the walking in the counsel of the ungodly because the world is not going to push the agenda of Jesus. Especially not now. There's an agenda going on, and it's creeping into the church. Witchcraft. Idolatry. The Lord has given me a message. I'm just, the reason I haven't delivered it yet, because I am trying to be so biblical. Because no one's going to refute the Bible. I told the Lord, I just have to get prepared in my study to present. Because I'm saying some things, it's, it's getting worse and worse. People are aligning themselves to, to things that we shouldn't be aligning ourselves with. There are things that are going down, getting in strongholds. And I mean, stop. I'm going to stop because I'm going to say what I should. I'm going to wait. For, but when the Lord releases me. Because he, and it's getting us ready for the Antichrist. If you ever read Revelation, it talks about this, the, the 666, the, the uh, Antichrist, the man of lawlessness. And there's going to be two prophets. If you read the Revelation, I think, was that, was that 12 or 13? Then 13 and 14, he's talking about those two beasts that they saw. The, the one beast was the false prophet. The other beast was the, the, the government leader. The false prophet is going to endorse that one world government. And I think COVID is getting this world ready 
because it says that unless you take the mark, you won't be able to even uh, do business or, or get maybe, uh, maybe get food. I don't know how it's going to happen. But, but can you imagine uh, you can't go over the border unless you got the vaccination card? So, so not, not that COVID is that, I'm just saying it's getting us ready to receive the next, uh, you know, unless you got that cold, uh, you won't be able to eat. So in other words, the, 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 the real church, we may die of starvation. If, if we're still here when this happens, we, we may die of not being able to eat. Because if you really, but see, we can't have saints that, that, that going to say, well, I got to eat so the Lord understands. Not if it's against the Bible. But what happens is it's, it's, getting us, it's getting us ready for that, that if you don't, if you don't understand, you'll just say, well, you know, what am I going to do? Uh, this, if, if, I'm going to have to take the 6-6 because six, six, I got to eat. And, and you're not supposed to take the mark. But anything the world do, that's why I left these church doors open. That's why I left them open all through the pandemic. That's why I left them open. I took criticism. That's why I left them open. I left them open because when, when I went by Myers and Kroger, it was packed. I'm telling you the truth. It was packed. Them, all the scared people was in there getting what they thought they needed. And if, if food is essential, if the hospital is essential, the word of God is essential. When it's coming to that, people, they're falling away. They're getting comfortable. Because? It refers to the series of steps, whatever the ungodly put out, and that's what I'm going to follow. To stand, when it says stand, that's a picture, the commitment a person makes to various causes. They'll fight for what they don't want to give up. Stand. Nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Rep sit represent the settled attitudes of the heart, the fixed disposition, disposition of a person's heart. Who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat. So I'm not supposed to walk down those paths. I'm not supposed to stand up for anything that is not ungodly. In other words, I'm blessed if I stay away. So if I'm going to walk, I'm going to walk in the ways of God. If I'm going to stand, I'm going to stand for the Bible. If I'm going to sit, I'm going to sit not with the scornful, but with the righteous. My, my wife, I could, I could kiss her. She, she does something to Kaylee. She does something to Kaylee. And Kaylee walks, she says this every time we're kind of having fun with her. She, she'll say this. And my, my wife taught her that. She was like, Grandma, you're a girl. She was like, yeah. And she said, I a girl. He said, Granddaddy, a boy. Now, y'all laughing. That's important. And she does that. And I, then I say, okay, what is Sherman? She says, Sherman, a boy. What is your mother? Mommy, a girl. I'm trying to get that distinction in. Y'all looking at me funny. Because it's, it's a transgender. Now you, you they're, they're, they're deciding. I mean, how demonic is that? They're deciding what they want to be. I, I, I could hug my wife. No, she does that. 
You, Grandpa, you, you a boy? Yes. I'm a girl? Yes. You better do it with your children. You better distinguish because the world is not. Y'all don't like this kind of teaching, but I, it's just... I don't want to come up in a church where transgender, transgender, it's against the Bible. And you cannot say, well, this is what the world is doing. If it's against the Bible, it is not right. That's, that goes for all sins. Someone said, um, they, some, well, they, they were born like that. Well, what if they were born like this? And I, and I, said, I said this clearly. I said, I was born like this. Well, they can't help it. I said, I couldn't help it. I was born to love women. Y'all looking at me funny. But the Bible tells me I got to get married. I can't have girlfriends. I can't sleep with everybody. I got rules confining me. You women see good-looking hug, good-looking men. You just can't just just flirt with everybody. There is there is rules for us too. So I can't be led by my feelings. If it's wrong, it's wrong. We went and we went. We were sneaking around. We we still knew it was wrong. That's why we snuck. When you tip and you did it because it was wrong. And then for some reason when you sat down in church, the pastor hit on it. So now you were sweating and you're feeling all convicted. Now when the pastor hit on something, he's throwing off. The pastor hit on something. Now who told him? The Holy Ghost is warning. The Holy Ghost is warning. And the same rules go. If it was wrong for us when we were tipping around, it's wrong now. And if you didn't repent and get right, you were on your way to hell. Then he says, meditates in verse 2. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. So he's not going to walk with the ungodly, he's not going to stand with the sinners, he's not going to seek, sit with the scornful, but he's going to delight in the law of the Lord. He's going to delight in the word of God. And in his law, he meditates day and night. You know what meditates mean? I'm not talking about the Eastern mysticism yoga. But the meditate means to rehearse, to rehearse, to rehearse, to think thoughtfully, to, to not just read the word, but but rehearse it and 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 rehearse it. Are you hearing me? I, I think I told you the story. You know, I, I, I belong to a club and I like to be pampered. That was before the pandemic. Now, you know, people don't touch anybody but no more. But, you know, I would, I would go there. I'd work out and stay in the sauna room. And then they had a uh, 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 Chairs that massage chairs. I just I just stayed there. Sometimes I would stay there like five six hours and, and getting a pedicure and manicure. I remember my uh, the person um, <laughs> that that uh, did uh, did my manicure. You know, uh, went to school with uh, Rita and Valerie, um, and uh, but uh, she's into that yoga stuff. So she had me in the chair and uh, getting ready to do my nails. And I was in the chair just. You know, just just had a good workout. Just had my steamer, just and just sitting in the chair with my with my robe on. She was like, "Okay, just relax." And she just said, "You know, think about just said think about good thoughts." She said, "What what will happen will happen." She started some of this yoga stuff. Then she she put on this music. So I was like, "Okay." And then I heard this voice. Be one with yourself. And then it says, just say, humming, humming, humming. I said, whoa, 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 whoa. I said, <laughs> I said, 
I said, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I ain't going to say it. I said, come here, come here. I said, I said, turn that off. She said, what's wrong? I said, turn that off. Turn it off. <laughs> I went down to my locker and got my, got my headphones, got my gospel music. I said, if I'm going to relax, if I'm going to uh, meditate on something, there ain't going to be no humming, 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 humming. Uh-uh, uh-uh. No demonic influence on me. I, I, like, I like he and his wife. I, they're, they're nice people. But, but you got to draw that line. I said, now, nah, I'm going to sit here and get a manicure, but I'm going to have Andre Crouch in my ear. I'm going to have the Yes Lord pray. I am not going to have no humming, humming, humming. I get up here and come start preaching some foreign gospel here because I'm all demonic. Oh, no, 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 no. Sometimes you got to draw, you just can't accept everything. I can get a manicure and a pedicure with gospel music on. It's funny, it's, it's okay, I'm, I'm, I got to finish. <laughs> don't, don't just put everything in your spirit. So, I don't see nothing wrong with it. It's just, it's just meditate, being one with yourself. Be one with the Lord. You're supposed to be one with him. He is your source. Your source is not looking to your inner self and find that inner strength. The inner strength is the Holy Ghost. If you ain't got the Holy Ghost, you ain't got no inner strength. Sorry. Right? So he meditates day and night on the word of God. And then what happened? He is like a tree... Planted by the rivers of water. If you ever see a tree by the water, that's a big, strong tree. By the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit, it's doing exactly what God wants it to do. And they're, they're fruitful, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. Blessed people prosper. Blessed people prosper. Are you hearing me? Prosper does not necessarily mean money. It just means whatever God uh, designed for me to do, it will come to pass. But the ungodly will not prosper, are not so, but are like the chaff with the wind rise on. Now, what is chaff? Chaff is that outer shell or husk that must be removed to get at the valuable kernels of grain. Chaff was removed by a process called threshing and winnowing, that threshing floor. And after the plants were cut and then they were crushed and then the pieces, they would, they would throw it in the air and even the slightest of wind will blow the chaff off. So, they were, so the ungodly are, are, are not rooted and grounded. So he goes from a, plea, a, a tree that is planted by the rivers of water to, to something that is so uh, um, um, light, it blows away. When you have no God, you're going to blow away. When you have no strength, you'll blow away. So, so it is a symbol of the faithless life that drifts along without direction. When you don't have direction, you'll pick up things, when you don't have focus, you'll pick up things. Are you hearing me? You got you to gotta know how to stay focused. I'm going to say stay focused. Good grain is a symbol of a faithful life that can be used of God. 
And I say, Lord, use me. I want to be blessed by God. I want to be blessed by God. Now, listen at, as we close this, it says, Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. The sinners cannot stand in the congregation of the righteous. The sinners are offended by the righteous, and the righteous are offended by the sinners. They cannot commingle. There is a difference. When you can commingle, commingle and, and not feel uh, and, f- and fit in, something's wrong. When I, would, when I would go to the Christmas parties, I wasn't threatened. They would have a drinks, and I'd get my Pepsi or Coke. And was not, was not, I wasn't, wasn't going out and wasn't going to the bar and drinking. And that, because we, we, I, I, have nothing to, I have nothing to offer. You have nothing to offer me. I have nothing to offer you. We, we don't have anything in common. We, we just don't have anything in common. I'm not going to the after joints. We don't have anything in common. I'm not going to the strip clubs. We don't have anything in common. We, you, know, you don't want to come to my, you don't want to come to church? I don't want to go where you are. When I'm going to go to the club, because he promised me he'd come to church, don't you go to that club. Are you hearing me? We don't have anything in common. And what you have to understand is um, we, we cannot, there, there seems to be a, a, a desire for the world that we have to get out of. There seems to be a, I want to be like the world. This is what the culture is doing. This is what the culture is saying. And to stay relevant, I got it. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's like, <laughs> I said this on the pub. I'm like, uh, I went to church. The church had a fog machine. Fog machine and, and, and we were doing praise and worship. The smoke was behind the praise and worship. And the, the lights were dim. They had this psychedelic purple, green, purple, green. They pr- I'm like, if I got to do all that to get into the presence of God, I ain't got none on the inside. And, and I, I heard a pastor say, you know, it, it sets the mood. I'm like, <laughs> I'm sitting here going, y'all ever read Chronicles where it said, and when they, when the, when the singers and the, and the singers and the priests were as one, the glory of the Lord came in. You set the mood by getting on one accord. In the spirit. If I need a if I need a disco light to set the mood, that's the wrong mood I want to be in in church. So the rocket in the I, I gotta have a fog machine. Really? If if the smoke don't come from heaven, I don't want no fake smoke. If the glory cloud, I don't want to create a glory cloud. People coming in, oh, it's so spiritual. When I came in, I saw smoke. No, that was fake. You ever, you ever hear that? You ever read that strange fire? That story, strange fire? They had, it was strange fire. And some people are being quickened it by the spirit, but it's the wrong spirit. And when they got them, they suffered. Nothing new. It was back there in that day. 
But the message was they had to repent. So they stayed in the wilderness 40 years, and it was a two-week journey. Think about that. They stayed in the wilderness 40 years, and it was a two-week journey. God had to kill off that whole generation because they took that slave mentality. When Egypt, they left Egypt, but they didn't leave Egypt in their heart. They left, them, they left it physically, but they still had it. And that's what the sanctification process is. It takes time to get where God wants you to get. But eventually, you got to get the message. And when, I, when, I, when, I, when I'm, these things that God didn't like, it's, well, you know, Solomon and Gomorrah, sexual perversion. They were, sexual perversion is just a real, real, just a carnal sinful city and he wiped them out. Now you know that's demonic when demonic when the when when two angels and the men want to have sex with it it says if you read that all the men of Sodom and Gomorrah every man in every man wanted two men because they were fresh meat. So, so you know what that's saying? Everybody that slept with everybody in the cities, they wanted some fresh something. To the fact that, uh, I think it was Lot said, will you take my daughters? They didn't want the daughters. Lot said, take my daughters. <laughs> they didn't want that. So the angel said, I'll take care of it. He blinded them. And then idolatry, idolatry. That was, when you put a God next to God, and, and that's kind of what's creeping into the church now. Idolatry. Just watch it. I told you this a couple weeks ago. I, I, went, I went to, a, I went to a, a, a storefront church, and the pastor had a throne. He had a throne. I took a picture and sent it to him. I, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. He had a throne. Just, just red uh, velvet, just lions on it, just big. Just, just, just. I'm sitting here going, I'm sitting here going, if he ever asked me to preach, I wouldn't even sit in that thing. I, I, I could I wouldn't, my timidness wouldn't even allow me to sit, sit in that with, in God. You better watch what you idol. I push people to Christ because I don't want God killing me. Oh, God, oh, Pastor, you're great. God is great. I'm just, that's why I always pray, use me as a vessel. I just, just, I'm just a Dixie cup that when God gets through with me, he can get another Dixie cup. I just want to be, I want to deliver the word. Don't make an idol out of me. Perish, and I'm done. Perish. It says, for the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Now, that, that word perish, abad, obeyed, in Hebrew, means to die or to undergo destruction. This word is also used to describe the loss of strength and knowledge. The decline of nations and is applied to the destruction of pagan idols, images, and temples. Everybody's standing. So what that means is, it can be used to mean physical death, but it also can be used to mean spiritual death. And people are not changing because they don't, they don't physically die, but they're spiritually dead. And they don't know it. They're spiritually dead. They're spiritually dead. And he's saying that 
The blessed life is the spiritual life. The unblessed life is the unspiritual life. And I'm concerned, I'm concerned as I, as I look at the body of Christ, not just this church, but the body of Christ as a whole, I'm concerned that we are allowing things and comfortable with things that, that, that God is saying, this is not what I've called you to be. You don't need any other source. You don't need any other God. You don't need any other uh, thing to align yourself up with. All you need is the Lord Jesus Christ. All you need is God. He will direct you. He will lead you. Come on, lift those hands and worship. We're going to close. Hallelujah. So I'm just hearing, I'm hearing rededication, rededication, re recommitment, refocus, renewal, refocus, renewal. Hallelujah. We all are on a journey, and we don't talk from flawlessness, we talk from the blood of Jesus Christ. It's kind of like this. I'm going to give you this analogy. You know, I, I, use, I use my marriage because I, I live a boring life. I, my marriage, my kids, I don't do, I never really had a quote-unquote worldly life. I had a sinful life. I never was out in the world, but I was in sin. I want to make that clear. I wasn't perfect. But, so I use my, my own life a lot. So my, my wife and I, we got married and I still didn't know how to be married. So I still was playing basketball with my brother, just going out with the boys. And so, you know, we live in an apartment. So she, she gets on a volleyball team at work. So we were, we were married, but we were still doing separate things. Y'all hear me? We, 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 we were trying to build a life, but we had separate life because we didn't know how to be together because we've never had. We were just, we were single, so we were doing single things. And then, and then I was thinking, maybe it was the Lord, I was thinking, I was like, you know what, if we're ever going to bond, we got to start doing some things together. So the first thing I did, I, I'm a passionate bike rider, now, because of it, I bought two bikes. I bought her a bike, and I bought me a bike, or I think she brought a bike or whatever. So I got two bikes. So then, since I like sports, since I like to work out, so we bought bikes and we rode bikes together. Then she, she went to graduate from Lawrence Tech. She would take me up to Lawrence Tech, and we played racquetball together, or tennis, or whatever we did. So we started doing things together to build relationship. Since we had the title of marriage, but we still had to build relationship. When we get saved, we still, some of us still want to act like we're not saved. And the Lord's saying, in order to get to know me, you got to build, you, you got to turn away. So I would tell my brother, I said, man, I, I can't play ball tonight. I said, no, nah, man, I'm going to go ride with my... And he said, man, what's... Hey. And my, my brother, he just, you know, man, he was just, him, Pat, you, him, Pat. I said, no, nah, I'm trying to stay married. You know, my brother teased me. He was just, you know, you, him, Pat, man, just yeah, tell, tell her to stay. You know, no, nah, nah, I'm, I'm doing this. And I, and I said, no, nah, I ain't going there tonight. I'm going home. Not because... I couldn't, not because I didn't want to. I'm starting a new life with someone, and I need it to bond. That's what you cannot bond with God if you still want to hold on to things you used to do.
It won't work. You got to be all in with God. And then you find out that I ain't missing what I thought I would miss. I ain't missed that. So what, I don't play softball. So what, I don't play that. I got a good looking girl I'm riding a bike with. And that gets benefits. <laughs> you better know where your, where your butter is, where your bread is buttered. <laughs> it ain't buttered from, from the boys on the softball. You better know who you sleeping with. And God is telling you, you better know who you sleeping with. If you want me to bless you, you've got to commune with me. Y'all understand? And that's what he's saying. If you, want, if you want a relationship with Jesus Christ, salvation is one thing, but now I got to know, I got to make him Lord. He's my Savior. The Lord means boss. I want him to be Lord of my life. Come on and say hallelujah. Father God, thank you for your word. Thank you. Thank you that we're on this journey. We want to get to know you better. And Father, we, to do that, we have to not align ourselves with everything but what you're calling for. And we understand that when we draw near to you, when we delight ourselves in you, you will give us the desires of our heart. Anything we need, you are the source. And we give you glory. Come on, clap your hands in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, bless his name. 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 I'm going to let you go. I'm going to dismiss you. Bless his name. Let God be God in your life. Turn away from all evil. Not that you're perfect. Strive. It's, it's a desire. My father explained that best. He said, not that you don't make mistakes, not that you don't fall. We all are susceptible to fall. But he said, if you have a desire that I want to do right, then he will help you. But I can't live my life on ice. I had to live my life on the foundation of God. And saints are slipping because they're on ice. They won't get off the ice and get on the solid ground, which is Jesus. Okay, I think I've said what the Holy Ghost wanted me to say. Uh, remember... I told you, Psalms is a special book. You can, you can preach any subject from the book of Psalms. And, and I, I, that's why it's so popular. Because you can find your situation in Psalms. God bless you. Uh, remember, we are um, preparing for um, uh, a couple of things. Um, this, uh, we're preparing for uh, Men's Day, Father's Day weekend is Men's Day. So there's a lot, of, a lot of things we're planning on that weekend. Let me get the date for that. I want to make sure that, um, that um, June 19th is Father's Day slash Men's Day. And then that Friday, June 17th, um, we have some game tournaments here. You know, we have our gym, so we have a basketball tournament they've, they've uh, uh, kind of scheduled for us. And then... I got billiards, ping pong. What was that other thing that I don't know what it was? Corn. A corn. Cornhole. Okay, I have no idea what that is. <laughs> I, I don't know. Okay. 
Somebody got to tell me so I can improve it because if it's crazy, I'm, I'm, okay, all right, okay. It's cool, all right, okay, I take y'all words for it. Okay, but anyway, um, it promises to be a good time in fellowship, but also on that, on that Father's Day, we're going to be honoring some of our senior fathers here, excited about doing that, and um, so, so be mindful of that day. Also, the 26th, um, uh, my own uh, wife, uh, missionary evangelist, prophetess Valerie L. Edwards, is going to be delivering the word, and I'm going to be so excited. We're going to show we're going to show her some love on that day and appreciate her, and um, I'll be her number one cheerleader. And like God bless you. So let's pray for her on that day, and your, that program is forthcoming. Uh, those two things, of course, uh, the men are rehearsing. They're having a men's rehearsal on. Tomorrow, Wednesday, and then the, the next Wednesday, next week. Uh, so, uh, Men's Day, fathers, um, you can come and sing and be mindful of that. I'm trying to see if there's anything else I need to. Um, oh, yeah, Saturday from 11 to 1. Uh, meet First Lady here. She is going out uh, doing some evangelizing in this neighborhood. So, so her um, um, what's that, outside the walls ministry. We're going to be going outside and, and doing some witnessing and evangelizing. So um, please come and support that effort. Um, please come and support that effort. It's uh, something, that, uh, um, something that God wants us to do by his word is evangelize. So come out and let's do that 11 to 1 this Saturday. Okay, okay. All right, God bless you. You want to say anything on that? And just, Okay, anything else that I need to announce right now? Everybody's standing. We're going to let you dismiss. If you, if you have an offering, um, um, offering bucket is here. God bless you that are listening. God bless you and God keep you. Um, the blessed life with Jesus is better than walking with the ungodly. And um, um, let's, let's, let's be what God wants us to be. God bless you. We love you. And keep those other announcements in mind. And God bless you. As we leave this place, Father, take us to our destination safely. Bring us back at the appointed time. Keep us from all COVID, flus, colds, viruses, uh, sinus problems, and allergies, Father. Just, just keep your people safe and healed. And I pray for protection as we go down the highways and expressways. I pray for traveling angels to be with us and you will get the glory and honor for all that you will do. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. God bless you. Love everybody. Hallelujah, 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 to God be the glory.